Let's talk about why flails are awesome. Hey everybody, this is the Scholar Juno Mojang Nibbing. Today I want to make another video about flails. A while ago I made a video about flails and I feel like I got some I got some comments that I want to respond to and I also thought there was more to say about the topic, so here we are. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is that my flail is kind of upgraded. Before I had a string, now I have this chain, and that's actually special thanks to the channel Sifu Cuddle because he made a video and showed where you can find these things and you know ways you can attach them to sticks and stuff. And uh, so as soon as I saw his video, I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta order me some of those, <laughs> and I did, and you know I made some better flails. So what are the comments I got on my video that I felt like I needed to address? Now, in my original video, I made kind of two claims about the flail and why it would be advantageous in certain circumstances over a simple stick of the same length. Number one, I said that sometimes with a flail you can save energy just kind of like swinging it around slightly. I'm not going to do it right now because it's really loud as you can tell, but um, basically you can try to conserve energy by not by keeping it in momentum and then you can quickly lash out and strike things and it's not always predictable and that can be used to your advantage when you're facing an adversary. The second thing I said was that if you're on a horse, because in China the historical sources pretty explicitly state that flails are you know, horseback weapons. Whenever you're using it in that context, it has the advantage over a simple stick because a simple stick, when you strike something, can be wrenched out of your hand because all the vibration of when you strike will be sent straight into your hand and vibrate in your hand and you know, it's hard to hold on to and it's not as pleasant of an experience as if you are using a flail because when I hit something with the end of this, that energy, maybe you could say it dissipates and it doesn't keep driving into the target like it does with a stick, but because it does that, that energy is no longer going up into my hand and making me lose my grip. But there are actually quite a few people who actually disagreed with me and said that a flail would come out of your hand easily because Whenever you strike something, particularly if you strike it up in this region, the chain will wrap around the object you're trying to strike. And whenever that happens, it's going to get stuck and it's not going to come out very easy. But uh, I did not agree with this for a couple reasons, and I, but I wanted to prove it and I wanted to test it. Uh, there's a couple initial responses to that. Number one, the chains are not always so long, particularly in China. Sometimes they have longer chains but a lot of the time they're just like this and this you know the diameter of my finger is quite tiny and even if I yank it it doesn't really get stuck however you could say that having such a short chain really reduces the effectiveness of the weapon but I believe that that actually explains the existence of something like this which is the Lian Zhu Shuang Tie Bian now the Lian Zhu Shuang Tie Bian is found in his depiction in the Wu Bei Zhi which is like a Ming Dynasty military encyclopedia and what it is is that you have a longer chain and somewhere in the chain, not necessarily in the middle, sometimes a little more down here, you have another section of wood that's there. And why the heck is that there? What is that doing? Because you're not really striking them with it. And uh, I should also say really quickly that the striking end of these things is usually fitted with iron, but mine are just wood. So, you know, they would hit a little harder than mine does. But why would you have a section right here in the middle? I believe that the biggest or one of the biggest reasons is because if my chain is going to get coiled around something having a big spacer right here keeps the chain from wrapping up on itself too much basically it's kind of like you know it, it's a way to keep this chain from getting too tied up in addition to that I also think it might impact the momentum of when I strike something with the end it's going to keep it from flying all the way back as easily because there's some weight out here in the chain that's also being thrown but I'm not a hundred percent on that and I'm not a physicist so uh, I'm not here to prove that mostly I'm here to address this question of is my chain gonna get stuck on you know weapon haft or something and I won't be able to get it and it's gonna be ripped out of my hands and um, I went outside and tested this and let's go look at my results if you're liking this video so far, go ahead and show me that by smacking that like button. <laughs> Alright, so let's get right into it. 
First, I should say that I secured the staff and the cutting stand to the ground so that it would resist the strike of the flail, and I'm striking with the part right next to the chain to encourage the chain to wrap around as much as possible. But with the smaller, with the flail with the smaller chain, it's just not cutting it. It's not going to wrap around all the way. So I switched to the longer flail, and even here, I am really trying to get it stuck, but it's just not working. I also tried just sprinting and smacking the pole with the part of the flail right next to the chain to get it stuck, but this didn't really work either. As you can see, even though I'm running by and, you know, getting the chain wrapped around, it just, you know, unwraps itself. I think that this pretty conclusively demonstrates that a chain is not going to simply wrap around and get tied onto something that easily. Next I switch to just striking at the pole with how you're supposed to do it with a flail to see what that feels like and how you can continue your momentum through the strikes and to make very quick repeated strikes. And when doing this with the longer flail is pretty cool because the longer flail is actually just a few inches short of a Joe staff, so it's almost four feet long. However, if you see me here with the Joe staff trying the same thing, uh, it just, all the hand shock just goes straight into your hand and it's very uncomfortable. And if I want to try and do repeated quick strikes, I actually have to take power out of my strike with the Joe staff in order to, you know, spin the staff around and strike from the other side quickly. So there you have it. You can see that because of this design, and I think even if it's a longer chain, it's still not going to be easily tied up, actually. And even if it's a tighter chain, I still don't think the chain wrapping completely around something and tying itself up is a very common occurrence. And even if it does happen, you know, I was doing this without a lanyard because I wanted to see if it would actually be ripped out of my hand, and I didn't want to, like, put a lanyard on to, like, prevent that from happening. Uh, but the fact is, is that if I did have a lanyard, and it does get tied around something, but I'm on a horse, I can just use the horse to start dragging the person around. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't think it's um, as big of an issue as people think. And whenever I was striking the pole with the, just the stick, the Joe staff, it was like my hand was vibrating and I started to get kind of red after doing it for a little bit. So it, it was just way more punishing. And the fact is, whenever I was actually striking with the actual end of the flail like you're supposed to, it was really easy and I could go quick without stopping my momentum and just continually swing. And I actually think that that's where the strength of the flail lies. It's not just because I have a weapon that's this short but can be extended out to the length of a Joe staff. I think that it's because when I strike something full speed, I don't get stopped. I can just continually strike full speed and keep my momentum up. Whereas with the regular stick, I have to either, you know, hit it with all my force and get stopped, or I have to, you know, strike it like I would with a flail anyway, reduce energy in order to come back around to strike the other side. Alrighty, and that is why I think the flail is awesome. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Tell me if I'm totally wrong and why I'm wrong, because I'd love to hear that. And, you know, just keep the discussion going because I love learning about this stuff and I hope you do too. Thank you all for watching. Please subscribe and don't forget to stay smashing.